Happy October. Today, I was reading through Twitter, and there were a lot of posts from writers. And then I had a thought. What if I could take one video and highlight one writer? With that being said, if you're a writer and you wouldn't mind me reading your work, please send your work to me and I would love to read your work. Tonight's video is highlighting an underrated writer. His name is Todd McKenzie. You may have heard of him. He's wrote many things and used to be a YouTube narrator himself. But due to unfortunate circumstances, he took a little break and now finds himself a little stuck. So I decided to highlight his work in this video with hopes that this would boost his morale and get back up and start writing again. This video is just a sample of his many works, so please help me cheer on Todd so he can breach this hurdle and get back to the wonderful writing that he does. By the way, Todd, I love your work. So, without further ado, close the blinds, dim those lights, cuddle under your favorite blanket, and let's begin. To be desired. The city life for a girl like me is one of infinite possibilities. I can be anything I wish with just a flash of my gaze, a twitch of my hips, and a whisper of forbidden desires. Too bad those which I intend these actions seal their fate upon my seduction. I have a hunger which cannot be fed. A lust that finds no satisfaction. You have heard these kind of tales before, and no doubt you have already identified the creature which I am. But there is another side to my nature, which you may not expect. I fear the night, the darkness. I don't want to be alone in the night, and I can't walk in the day. The treacherous existence that I asked for, all I ever wanted was to be desired. No one looked at me in the light, so I went to the shadows for help. It was the contract that I did not take the time to consider its requirements. But when the sun descends, only the lights of the city and the touch of a stranger can comfort me. But my desire to be loved was replaced by a hunger for mortal substance. So many men have promise of wealth and charm that among all the women I was blessed with such a variety of choices. Yet, when I would love them, my alternate lust would take over. Their eyes of longing would widen with fear. They would scream as long as their lungs remained intact. Their strong bodies would shrivel as my veins latched into them. When I was finished with them, my eyes would well with tears of blood my body undulating with its own satisfaction. Then the whispers in the darkness, counting down each soul left to my contract. I hear the screams in my dreams, the demonic laughter at the reward that awaited each of them. Those who sought the satisfaction of the flesh over true romance, had they wanted the woman I was, they would have avoided this terrible fate. Had I been satisfied with the woman I was, I wouldn't have forced them to meet it. I had tried staying in the shadows. The hunger was too much. I had tried going to men with good hearts, those who no woman would look to. They wouldn't last with me. My body was just too much to resist. I was trapped in a cycle of doom. All I wanted was love to be desired. Not this. I should have tried 
to just be the woman who I was. Instead, I am a vile, wretched priestess of perdition. I hear whispers. One more soul. I know what this means. My contract will be ending, and I will join those which I helped condemn. I'm trying to stay in the darkness, but the lights of the city are calling me. I want to remain alone, but the lust is too great. I only wish to love you, but you will be devoured by my body, absorbed into the darkness, an eternity of agony. But don't be afraid. We will go together. We are victims of a life of unfulfilled desires. Let me kiss you, my darling. Comfort me with your love. I'm so afraid of the dark. <laughs> Autumn Winds, written by Tom McKenzie, narrated by Lily C. Nation. It's a sunny autumn day, which makes the shadows of swaying trees move about the walls of my unlit house. I have no desire to adhere to their beckoning movements. I know better. The beauty of nature has diverted to something much, much more ominous since the forest began resisting visitors of the human persuasion. The grass, the grass also secretes an acidic dew, forbidding the cooling sensation of moisture beneath bare feet. The world remains indoors for now, but the trees, the trees wish to bury their dead, and they order the vines and weeds to take hold of the blasphemous dwelling places that we have built out of the corpses of their loved ones. Humans try to argue that this was the way things were meant to be. You were made to house us, to warm us, to allow us to breathe. But the plant life has always been the majority of the living things upon this ever spinning sphere have made the humans eat their own statements. For the shadows of the hanging pods dance about my walls as well. They want me. They want my warmth, my exhaling breath, the fertilization of my flesh from unnecessary limbs which will be pulled away and cast out to rot with the browning leaves. Winter's coming. Time to sleep. I swallow a multitude of pills, but I realize far too late from what they are made out of the desired effect takes me. Perhaps this is mercy. They know that I'm willing to die so that they may be provided sustenance. But I awake without the ability to move, save for the swaying caused by the autumn wind. I watch the smoke trail from my imitation of a cigarette sway to and fro like the hips of a dancing woman. Within the bar, the sounds of the regulars maintain their octave that I had been listening to for the past fifty or so years. I keep my eyes to the glass of bourbon in front of me, not feeling the need to pan the crowd for any newcomers. But of course, when you least expect them, that's when they sit on the stool next to you. Buy a girl a drink. Her voice brought out the worst trait of mine, the one that placed me in this eternal void of unfulfilled wants and unforgettable regrets. I turned to the new girl and flashed a grin her way. With what, baby? My good standing with Joe here? I focused hard and flicked my glass with my finger. The sound brought the faithful bartender to my aid, and within moments my guest had a drink before her. There you go, Tommy, Joe said, looking down. He was off again to tend to the regulars. 
Wow, seems like you've made a friend during your time here. Must not think it foolish to serve the likes of you. She held her fingers in a C shape around her glass for a second, then took hold of it, raised it to her lips, and took a delicate sip. Likes of me, huh? Well, he knows the score, knows that I bring in tourists sometimes. She placed her glass down again, then peered at me with the usual stare given by her kind. Let's get out of here. This place stinks. In a rush, are we? You're an anxious one. I'm not in the mood for romance. Not that you would know what that means. I know what romance means, but I am by no means a professional at the occupation. This one was sly. She knew my methods well. Perhaps tonight was the night. It was an evening much like this before, but I still had my methods. Hear that? That's my favorite song. I don't care. Don't you want to relax a minute? Listen to the melody? I just want you. <laughs> if you want me, I'll go with you. But may I at least have a dance? You're strange. You're beautiful. She began to laugh. <laughs> I felt a little more at ease. What are you wanting, Thomas? A second chance. Just like everyone else here. There are no second chances for you. It doesn't hurt to try. You would too if you were in my shoes. I was in your shoes once. How do you think I got where I am now? In a bar with a washed up soul. You deceived many. I know my way around your ways. Then you can follow my lead. I stood up and held out my hand. She glanced downward to her lap. Been asked to dance recently? Never. How did I guess? She took one more sip from her drink, then joined me at the center floor. In the midst of dying matches and refilling glasses, we swayed to the rhythm of regret, yet in this moment we shared in its reprieve. We stayed like this for the night's entirety, till the last of the patrons had left to return to their troubles. Likewise, I took her hand, and the two of us walked out to the street. Thank you for showing a girl a good time, she said. She stroked a strand of hair from her face, then peered up to me. I suppose you would rather stay than come home with me. I'll go wherever you want me to, baby. The night is ours. The night is yours, she responded. I give it back to you. She turned away from me and walked down the silent street. She turned back once more, as if to let me know what I was missing, but she continued on her way without me. Likewise, I returned back to my stool where two full glasses of bourbon sat untouched. Joe stepped over to them and asked if I was done. I gave no sign, and he took the drinks and poured them out. Two wasted glasses of bourbon, one wasted life. Joe flipped off the lights, leaving me in silence till the regulars would return again. I thought of the girl and what could have been. Tonight wasn't the night, but one night it will be as it was when I deceived the wrong woman, leading to my death. I now sat as a lonely, regretful spirit that haunts a place where those still living attempt to drown their own regrets. It beats the alternative which men like me deserve, and one evening I will face. But as of tonight, I still got it. my lovely lilies thank you so much for watching the new video if you can hit that subscribe and like button comment below and tell me your thoughts also don't forget to tap the little notification bell so you're always in the know on this channel as well guys you can always find me on Twitter Instagram snapchat and always you can hit me up in my emails Feel free to send me your stories whether they're fiction or totally true I'm always up for some great stories and oh, by the way, until next time, sweet dreams. <laughs>